How's it going, Lone Riders? Today, we're going to talk about the top box, and we need your help to tell us what we can do even better. Let's just jump into it. I'm Andrew, I'm the industrial designer here at Lone Rider, and these videos are about us developing products with you guys and manufacturing them. So what we do is we make these videos, we go through, talk you through the process, and we show you where we're at. And if you guys see anything, then drop us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you, and so we can integrate this into the product. While you're down there, hit that like button and subscribe if you like this stuff, because we will be producing more and more. For example, this product will go through probably seven, eight different videos about from very beginning, how we concept it, how we draw it, how we sketch it, and then uh, how we actually do the DFM, the design for manufacture and manufacture of it. So if you see anything, again, let me know in the comments down below and we'll check them out and try our best to integrate them if they're workable. So let's just jump into the computer and check out where we're at. So this is our design right now. What you'll notice is the moly panels on the outside. That is a concept that we've been running for, for quite a while uh, with the first sketches we did even at the beginning of last year. So this is the, where we're at with the design. Uh, if you've been following along with the videos, we also did a video on the sketching stage. So we did a lot of crowdsourcing for ideas on what we should do. And then I made some sketches. I'll put them up here. And then from there, we go into the CAD and that just like solidifies everything for us. And we design it and uh, get it ready for manufacture. The first thing you'll notice is these hard moly panels. These whole moly panels have been used quite a bit in the military, but also uh, for the overlanding 4x4 community. They use it a lot inside their boxes and stuff like this. And we were talking about this early last year as well. Uh, so what we've done here is added moly panels to three sides. At the moment, on the back side here, it's got a rest. We're going to put another rest up here. It's not developed yet. Um, again, this is uh, still um, a direct copy from the sketches that I made, this design. So it's not finished at all. Just just remember that this is a work in progress. You can even see here we've got a handle hanging out here. Um, still, you know, so we're still, we're still definitely um, developing this product. The concept with the hard moldy panels is we can attach our other bags, our mini bags, our tall bags, and all those extra bags on top. So if you want, you can quickly access those bags or uh, for different riding conditions, you can pack up those bags, have these hard moldy panels ready and just throw them on or throw them off whenever you need them. This is a 50, uh, just late 50s kind of volume here uh, and it, it can take up to two helmets so that's the big first big one is the volume uh, that's one of the major important re uh, sizing and requirements that we got back from you thing we've developed is security uh, we've increased the security we've heard a lot of feedback that um, the locks and stuff like this I don't hold up on most top cases so we're really looking into the security and making sure that it's hard for them to rip it off or break it or use tools to get it off. Of course, it's going to be hard to make it completely um, safe. Uh, people can got grinders, battery grinders and everything these days. So um, we can't make it completely um, theft proof, but we can make it very, very difficult for them. Okay, so let's just have, uh, let's have a look at the um, construction first. We're going to use aluminium. Uh, the the design here, the idea here is we use flat aluminium and then we can bend it with, uh, we can bend it into shape and then weld those parts uh, that need to be welded. And this gives us a really rigid system um, and also a, a, quite a waterproof system as well. Um, cost is a massive issue that we're struggling with right now. Um, these things are quite expensive to make and um, they sell for just around 500 euros. Um, I'm not sure if that's including the the base plate and everything but this is uh, the margins here are these quite extremely expensive to manufacture so we're trying to reduce parts as much as possible um, just to make it accessible for everybody um, and this is really a design we have to really have to design around this it's a really it's a thing that we design around every day we try and do it smart with uh, not you we don't you we can't use cheap materials and stuff like this so we have to use smart design for example, this part here is a handle and it's the same on both sides. So we can just use one tool and one part for this. Also these corners as well. If you look from the bottom, it's one, two, three, four. We've got, we've got four parts there um, and that's all one tooling, for example, to keep cost down. The moly panels on both sides also, also 
one piece of tooling on the back that'll be have to be another piece of tooling so it's a that's a lot of plastic parts in here uh, for example let's have a look um and let's open it up uh, we've got this seal here that's a rather large tooling and that's massive cost we can't really get around that uh, because of the size we need a good solid seal there but um it is one of the one of the things that we're concerned about is making sure that we can deliver a product that's um got a good value with super good features uh we're also looking at the concept of just including everything so it's out of the box you get everything you need so there's no buying extra add-ons or nets or kind of um, handles or anything else we're trying to include everything in one go so it's a one click checkout and you have the, the complete system so let's check out the moly panel here uh we got the moly panels are held on in four places at the base here there is a kind of a catchment area here a clip and at the top it is also the same kind of key slot system to open and to remove them what you have to do is you have to open up the lid and then you can lift up the moly panels and re remove it completely and with this system it means that you can quickly access them and take them off the bike which is cool maybe if you have a first aid pack you can just open up the top box rip off the whole hard moly panel and go to the the patient another thing you'll notice here is we are working with a seal and um, the seal inside here is at the moment it's a there's a lot of movement on the top box and there's a lot of parts that have to fit together and to make this waterproof is quite difficult uh, let's try and cut this in half and one of the one of the best one of the best ways we've found is to use this kind of rubber system so this is also a mold that we have to do we can't just uh, extrude it out uh, and this is what this does will fill up all the gaps all the time so it will double seal on each edge quite a smart system uh, we've it's better than the o-ring system we found with this testing so far um, so that's the seal in there one thing we have to do is attach all the uh, one thing we have to do is attach all the plastic parts to the metal parts uh, and we're going to rivet it in place these rivets are very very strong uh, we'll also have to glue it in place as well um, but that's how we're going to do it you can see here my uh, cad is a little bit off but essentially they will go into those holes it's development process um, and that's how we do it so it's quite a bit of uh, manual labor to assemble this um, there'll be quite a few parts to assemble this as well uh, one of the things we're thinking about here in the top box is to make sure that when you open it um, it's got some kind of living hinge uh, excuse me it's got some kind of living hinge so it stays open at the top uh, we were playing with this idea for a little bit and then i got feedback from some people that uh, they've left their lids open before and things have fallen out so we're actually thinking about the other way where it tries to automatically close it al almost pushes down all the time so you want it to keep open so you can just chuck stuff in but when it gets to a certain angle for example here it'll close so if you know if you have kitchen cabinets that have those double hinges you open it it gives a bit of pressure and then it goes into the mid stage where it's just loose and then it pushes out and keeps the door open uh, like in the kitchen those hinges we're looking at the same kind of concept here uh, it's just a, like it's actually not as important it's not high priority but it'll be nice it'll be it's just a nice feature to have if we can't achieve it we have to develop everything ourselves then what we're going to do is just use uh, standard hinges here the hinges we got now are integrated um, onto the back plate here so we can just um, put a pin through here and lock it in place we're using these um, injection molded hinges because they're super strong and rigid uh, we'll have to reinforce this back plate as well uh, with a lot of testing we've found that if this hinge here is a little bit off uh, and bent because of usage or this hinge is a bit of usage because of um, bending or, or put, putting too much stuff inside and uh, talking out this whole area the, the whole thing becomes leaky so we're going to reinforce this whole area as well probably bring these two handles down so they're flush um, so you can put a bag and like an overlander or something like this i'll put that there this overlander um, we can attach that there but there's also some kind of fixing points too at the top we might have to bring those in a little bit just to get them inside a bit closer in but uh, essentially those will have a probably a rivet as well so you can attach something to the top or tie down something to the top uh, we've got a handle also in the front here and uh, some people like this handle i generally would use these two handles uh, on the top here 
Um, but it's even in the middle we've been testing and people seem to want that. Is it something you want, a handle in this location? Because as you see, we have to design around this moly panel. And this is looking at the back, right? So if you're following a bike with a car, this is what you're looking at. So do you need moly panels on the back? Do you need a handle? What do you need here? Uh, the locking system here is still work in progress. We've got the key uh, keyed in. We want to key in, uh, make the keys adaptable to your bike key as well. We're, we're introducing this system. Uh, it's working. It's quite complicated. We're going to find a supplier that has high quality, quality locks, which is always hard to find. Um, and also we're going to supply our own key as well. Keys are a tricky one. Uh, there's many different types of keys, uh, and when people have uh, different number keys, we have to find that number and re-key it for them and stuff like this, but we're working on this now, but we're trying to get a good quality lock in here that you can key into your bike lock as well. Even though that's slowly but surely, there's, uh, it's going to go keyless. Uh, yeah, so if we open up this system here, uh, essentially what we're doing, it's a, lever a leverage system, so we're pushing hard down onto the lid. And that's that's how we get our our pressure, um, and that's how we get our good seal. So it will automatic, it won't automatically lock, um, but it will work uh, quite nicely. Uh, and we're trying to make it so if you forget to lock it, it will never open as well, right? So that's really important. So if you close the lid, you don't need your keys; you can just drive off, but it will be unlocked. Another thing we've been working on is how to attach it to the bike. This is quite tricky. As I said before, there was a few issues with people stealing these top boxes. And we're trying to make it as complicated or hard as possible uh, for them to steal these boxes. Uh, because you generally have quite expensive helmets. Helmet, good helmet these days costs five, six hundred euros, if not more. Uh, and you don't want them to just go missing, right? Uh, or stolen. So we have decided to move the lock onto the top plate or the back plate uh, and we're still working through the concept here to see if it'll actually work what we did is we for the rackless system we have this locking system at the front and this works really well um, and it's just nice a nice user experience it just clips in place it's very easy and it's done it's locked in place you don't actually need to key it in and lock it properly so we're, we're playing with the same kind of concept here because we learned a lot from that last project uh, and the only thing I can see here, if you look, um, it's actually underneath, quite far underneath. So you might have to fiddle around looking for your key, uh, the keyhole, or you have to look, actually get your head under there and put your key in there. Um, from what I understand, most people don't actually take their top boxes off. Uh, they just take the contents of them. They take a bag out and then they swap that bag with their helmet. So I don't think it's going to be used that often, but uh, let me know in the comments below. Do you take that off every day uh, to take to your hotel room or do you just grab out a bag that's included that's what we should include anyway take that bag out of the top box and put your helmets there in there and replace it lock it and walk off and leave the actual top box on the bike there's an internal discussion that we have uh, so i'll put it out to you what do you think another good thing that we've found with this concept is that we are freeing up a lot of space inside the top box as well by putting all the mechanics on the outside and it's much more waterproof and robust so Looking from, from looking from the bottom, uh, we're using a three-point system and it's like a key lock system. So it just slides into place. And then when it slides into place, we've got a latch here that moves down, up or down and that actually releases the locking mechanism uh, and we can actually open that up, right? Open that up and detach it. So there's a kind of like a key slot here as well. So it automatically locks. So when you push this closed, what it does is lock in place. And that takes the pressure off this edge, takes the pressure off the locking barrel inside there. You don't want the locking barrel under pressure. You want another piece under pressure because what's happening also, you're putting a lot of weight into this top box. It's moving around for many, many hours. And what it'll do is that it'll just wedge itself in somewhere. And it, what it'll do is like, like basically sit itself so deep into this, these middle parts that it'll be really difficult to get off. So what we're doing is we're removing this option and so when you put the key in the key moves quite nicely you can't break your key off uh, and this is the pro problem we're working through now i don't think this is the complete um, finished solution uh, this i think there's too much direct weight still on this locking mechanism here uh, but we are working on this and um, yeah it's coming along uh, just slowly as well but it's coming along if you have any ideas what we what you think we could do or if you've seen something in the real world uh, 
and just link to it and I'll have a look at it. And if you think, think we can apply that same mechanical concept to this, then let us know. It'd be really cool. There's a lot of stuff out there. There's problems. Be, we're not reinventing the wheel here, right? We are just making it even better than everything on, that's on the market. Um, and we're making it more user friendly. This is the key, making it really user centric. This is the goal from this whole design project and make it look awesome. Uh, about the looks, what we're trying to do is we, one of the requirements was that we want to make it look really, really awesome. And the reason is because it is just a top box, right? We want to make it um, recognizable. Uh, I think we've achieved that with these moly panels on the on the side there uh, and a few other kind of high quality details. So let us know in the comments down below what you think of these, um, the system and uh, yeah, or the looks and or what else you think um, we could do to make it even look look even better why would you why would you consider this uh, an option like do you like the looks of it don't you like the looks of it yeah i'd love to hear for your feedback so let's open it up and have a look inside i don't want this video to go on too long uh you'll get bored of me so yeah open it up we're going to put a um kind of a net up here or moly panel i'll come i'll make another video about all the extras uh maybe next week uh, so stay tuned uh, or subscribe and um, we'll send out an email about that um but subscribe hit that bell icon and um yeah we'll put out another video next week about what we actually put into this product and uh, for example nets bags all the extras that you have to buy extras with other brands and we're thinking about all the including it, but we've got to figure out what to include. So yeah, that's next week. Stay tuned. So inside we want organization. Um, this is going to fit two helmets for sure, or the top box. Um, the, the larger size, it could do a smaller size as well for one size. But um, we are trying to figure out what to, how to organize stuff and how what people want. We definitely know if you've ever looked in any top box, uh, if there's metal on metal or anything, there's a lot of movement in that top box and it scrapes and just scrapes and damages the whole inside so we're going to try and pad it hopefully but or or make some kind of good coating where it doesn't um scratch everything up then it just destroys all the gear inside but at the moment here you can see we've got two helmets and a um and more of a kind of like a, a compartmentalized system this is a very simple system or do we just do a bag? We don't know. Um, we're just still working through that. But this is where we are at the middle. What's really cool about this whole system here is um, it is there's a lot of space. So all our mechanics are on the outside of the box. So on the inside, we've got just pure, pure space for gear. And that's pretty optimal, uh, optimized for essentially something that should be carrying things so yeah that's the update for the top box we are actively developing this right now so i'm going to read the comments in the next couple of days so get into it tell me what you think down below what we could do else uh, if, this, if you see a failure point here or a, a part that um, may not work properly um, or some new ideas let me know in the comments below next week we'll do a video on what we actually put into it uh, all the bags and extras and stuff like this so stay, stay tuned uh, hit that subscribe button like us as well it's great for the algorithm and i'll see you next week